I wanted it like this or like this? <laughs> how y'all how want it? Like that or like that? like <laughs> that. I'll say it. All right, I'll use the mic. Uh, cool. How are y'all? How's everybody? It's very, very much an honor to be here in everyone's presence. And um, thanks for being here. Congratulations for being here. You yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. Could have been anywhere. We're here right now. Our attention is with each other. That's that's deep. It's like trillions and trillions and trillions and Google plexes of data points trying to take your attention. So yes. All right, I'm, my name is Mike Word, and I'm going to do a rap for y'all real quick before we get into this. Y'all want to hear, hear a rap? All right. It's ecological. Everything, everything you do is ecological when you think about it. So, ah, all right. My voice moves along the contours of the beat. I more than meets the eyes, reach the skies with the combo. Got folks doing the rain dance, the same as before, but it's been alive for so long, yo. Strong blows a hole with the sediment. Hit the ground running potholes from the weather ran. Bad design, cause man's declined to be excellent. Separate is man and mind now. Man, your mind, stay level like the water do. Wait, audible, that's what you ought to do. Make the mama nice and wet, that's what I likes to get. The earth work in the birth first, then the death. I bend my breath and blend my steps. Right in with the next, ain't no ending left. Yeah. So just let that cycle soak in. Laugh a cry, yo, no joking. Mastermind for those folks when they can't do for self, cause they used to help. Mickey's ain't doing well, they ain't used to help. Fighting each other over whose truth to tell. Knowing damn well there's more to it than you could tell. I trust the curves of the earth more than a dude with stale ass raps running his yaps about how you will fail though. So nah y'all, that's nice, what's up? Dropping key lines, yeah we got the funk. Pooling resources, not pulling these forces against the sense that you don't got the front. We build with the rhythm. Vision at a vantage point. The seeds are rising to advance my point. It's time to blow the lid off this opera. That lady singing type rap, ain't no stopping now. Forces of nature, but we all collide. Of course it's the nature, make us all abide. <laughs> That's hey. Yeah. So you know, we're all multi-dimensional beings. So, you know, Yash asked me to come out and share about green building, natural building. And, uh, you know, that's one of my passions. It's one of the things that I've, I've gotten myself involved in over the last decade or so. Uh, I guess I'll tell you a little bit about myself. My, uh, I started 18, excuse me, I'm going to take it back a little bit further to make some context. Uh, when I was about eight and a half, my mom and my dad separated. Okay, so I was, came up in a single family home. And I had a little, I have a little sister. She's, she was one at the time, a little bit less than one. She's about seven and a half years younger than me. So instantly, I'm having to be a caretaker, right? At a young age. Then at the age of 15, my mom got breast cancer, okay, and she survived, yay, but she, you, you know, you know how that impacts your psyche, and then two years after that, when I was 17, I got this weird form of cancer, they don't even know what, they had no other cases globally to really compare to, so they just pulled 20 cases and that was that, right? So 17 years old, those are 
those are the things that I experienced that started to shape my world. And what I started doing was researching and, you know, I, I became interested in how could this maybe have happened. And uh, what I came down to uh, finding in my, in my search is it's, it was my environment, right? It's environment. Uh, our environments influence how our genetics and our DNA express itself, right? And, you know, it's a dance. It's a back and forth dance. So it's, it's not one or the other. It's the dance between them. Uh, but because environment is such an important thing, and I started to learn that it was envir environment just helps you grow in all different ways. Just when, if you're trying to do a certain thing, you put yourself in the environment of that certain thing, and you'll be doing that thing a lot faster. Right? It's just proven. So uh, environment brought me to natural building, right? And permaculture, and uh, this, this, the, the idea of how to live in a healthy space, right? How to be healthy in your, just the space you sleep in and you eat in and you poop in, take your, wash your body in and all this, right? All that. So um, we get to natural building, you know? It's inspired by nature. It's, it's a no-brainer. I know everybody in here is, it's a no-brainer uh, where, where our minds are at and where our focus is at. Is uh, you know, is is we we can't deny the forces of nature, and how and how they influence our lives. It doesn't matter how mega a mega billionaire builds some crap, and the hurricane will come and knock that shit out right away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we know that it's really nature, and and we gonna take our cues from nature. So that's what I do, and uh and and. It, that, that comes with building as well. So we get into building, right? What, uh, I know some of these things, it looks a little blurry, but what's this little, this little guy's doing some things. He got, he, you know, he, you can, we can learn some things from this dude, you know what I mean? This little, this little birdie got a clay fiber house. Ain't that, ain't that interesting? Got some dirt and some hair it together, shaped it a little bit, found, found it down the block, so it was found near near the site, right? Non-toxic, you know, this is natural materials, and it's, it's an appropriate size, right? Yeah. It makes sense. We can learn from these, these creatures. So, uh, you know, what's the basic principles of natural building? You know, we, we talk about, and, and I know a lot of y'all in here are natural builders already. Y'all, there's a lot of, uh, we preach it to the choir. So this, this is just kind of meant as an overview of some of the things that we can do with natural building, with green building. And, uh, you know, it's just my spin on it, and we just going to vibe in, in that, all right? And, uh, but, uh, yeah, there's so much you can do. This is only a uh, you know, scr scratching the surface. Imagine, you know, imagine with me, if you will. So basic principles of natural building. <coughs> Choose local and, and non-toxic materials. Local and non-toxic materials. You know, these are just suggestions. If you want to do it like, like the bird do it, this is how you do it, you know. We can overthink it too, like humans. Make ourselves feel smart. Make things all complex, but we're smart. Right? Or we could just, you know, keep it simple. Minimize processing. Minimize the processing. They say the embodied energy. You've heard that term before. We might talk about that a little bit more. Okay. Avoid harm to the environment. Ah, I like that one. Mm -hmm. who, who doesn't like living in a nice environment that's not harmful, that's nurturing, takes care of you? 
doesn't mess up the areas around you. Wouldn't it be nice to be able to go to the river and just be able to drink out the river? We used to be able to do that. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Get one of them straws now, huh? you, you know. Filter straw. No, I ain't never did that. I never tried it. That's <laughs> great. Minimize waste. What do they, what do they say? What's the permaculture th uh, saying? Um, there's no waste in nature, right? In nature, the the waste from one species or animal creature kingdom is food for the, another, all across the board. You like doo doo, and then the other person come on. Oh, you. <laughs> you know, that's that's how it works in nature. I know it seems gross to us, but even our own poop, right? If you compost it right, you can grow some food with it. Poop closes the loop. <laughs> right? Minimize waste. So we, we minimize waste because uh, we know in the building industry how it is now. Yikes. Lots of waste. Support local businesses and people. So we're still, you know, the e e ecological living is still economical living as well, right? Economics and ecologics. I like that word, ecologics. Okay. Hand in hand. They don't tell us in school, but, you know, commerce comes from nature. In the ancient times, you know, we, we don't get all crazy in the no rabbit hole, but... Yeah, that's how the that's how the money system all that came from some cast that went and sat in nature and was like, oh, that's how the river bank uh, the currencies. Okay, um, looking at stuff in nature came up with the whole thing. Uh, cultivating sense of community. Have you ever? Uh, has anybody here ever done cop? Has you ever made cop? Oh, so y'all know, y'all already know. When you do the when you uh, stomping on the cob, you turn on the mute. Dance party, dance battle going like I can squish it better. <clears throat> I'm a, I'm a hip hop dude, so you know we'd be like it's friendly loving competition. We know it's a really it's a collaborative thing. But. Yeah, you know. Sense of community. Um oh we got some crazy movements around the world around natural building. Has anybody ever been out to Portland to the uh what they call it the the building, village building convergence. You've been out there, Robin? Yeah, it's powerful. The uh, place making, city repair. It's a lot of natural building projects that people were, that they came around as a community and they really transformed that city, the laws and everything around, you know, what tra how, tra how pedestrians and traffic interact and a lot of cool things. Village Building Convergence. City Repair is the name of the organization. Or um, what's the other, they got another name for them. Uh, oh, that's another, I never heard that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's like their actual professional like, architecture. Okay, that's the style that they do, communitecture, because they're, yeah, the architecture and community. They're, yeah, they, they on point. Mark, Lake, Mark Lakeman and them. Yeah, Mark is the homie. He's a sweet dude. Let's go. Oh, about that. Yeah, keep. Yeah, yeah. Keep us all on that, on the, in the loop on that one. That's beautiful. You working with Mark with the, with the, with that? No, he's like consulting us. He likes okay. Dope. Dope. Awesome. Yeah, he's a good dude. All right. And then a uh, appropriate size, like you know, we saw before. Thinking about that, it's energy and. There's a lot of stuff that goes into living, right? You think about it? It's like a lot of systems involved. And you, you over overload a system unnecessarily? Why? I know we probably do it now because we just don't know, we don't know. I'm I'm gonna give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna give the whole world, all of us, the benefit of the doubt. 
that we just start working with the best ideas we got. You know, until some other idea, ideas catch, this, this is the ideas that people be working with. So this is the ideas we starting to work with, right? Huh? Huh? We working with things. So we got a little history. Right? So, you know, again, forgive me, some of these is blurry. But you could see, you see, that's a big ass building. Excuse my language, children. I'm sorry. Big old, big old building. Humongous, monolithic. And it was built a very, very long time ago. And it's still standing for some reason. I wonder. Hmm. Interesting. Has anybody ever heard of the walls of Jericho? The oldest known earthen mud city. 8300 BC. Cool. Remnants of it still standing. You know, you can, you can build something new on top of that. Use a little foundation. Hey. This is Ali Kosh in Iraq. 8. 1000 BC. Uh, the dimensions of the bricks at Ali Kosh, you, you guys, they're almost the same. They're almost identical to the modern uh, mass produced adobe bricks in New Mexico, in Arizona. Almost the same. 8,000 years old has been hanging out. Or no, wait, that's more. 8,000. <laughs> 10,000 10, something. That's a lot. Saman Tel Es Sawan. This is that big temple. This was a, um, this is in the, t the Tigris, the, you know, the Tigris River. This is the, ba the banks. So this is the banks of the Tigris River. Uh, 5600 BC, this was a farming settlement. Farming. So back in the day, you, farm, you got a farming settlement. You was, you had to go. You was building big old buildings. Farming. That's interesting. Foundation was made from stone. Okay. See, the bottom's a little darker. So it protected from the moisture. And then it's a flat roof. So flat roofs make the walls real heavy. So you see, that's why there's these all these long, big staircases that come out. They're actually holding up the whole structure. Buttresses, they call them. Oh, there's so many cool pictures you come up with with natural building. This is in Pakistan, 5000 BC. We got ancient Greece. That lime is lasting, still looking shiny. This is in West Africa. This is a mosque. So this was this is um it's been around and maintained for the last five thousand years. Maintained. <laughs> that is that's wild, huh? Huh, baby? <laughs> yeah, that's that's a lot of work. You see them them things popping out? That's their scaffolding. It's just built into the building. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, Peru, Ecuador. This is 3400 BC. They've been doing these buildings. So, you know, you go to, to those areas in the south, and uh, like you go to some of them older temples, and you see all the, it's just stone. Again, you could just rebuild. Just throw some thatch on top of them things and put a little framing up again. You got a house. It's a metal, it's a, uh, it's amazing. It's incredible. This is the Tower of Babel. We know about, we've heard this, the famous one. Seventh century. This is raw adobe. So it's unfired. Right, the inside. And then it was, uh, the face was fired brick. So, the, you know, it, it had a stronger brick that was the casing of it. And then the inside, it was a softer brick. This was, um, some, some people say this was mankind's first skyscraper. Uh-oh. We, 
got, we've heard all the negative stories about the Tower of Babel came and all the languages and they got all split up all the people and then the skyscraper. Evil Babylon. It's a trip, huh? And look at look what it look where it's at. <laughs> That's what's left of it. But it's still look, it's hanging on. It's got that natural building twist, baby. <laughs> Turkey. This is in Turkey. They had those cool cone-shaped houses. They still live in these now. The indigenous folks hanging out in Turkey. That's that's cool. Mesa Verde. We know this 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 area. Peace out, peace to all the Pueblo natives. You know, we on we on that land. This is a Oh, mystical, right? That's a mystical place. Mesa Verde. Mystical. The Great Wall of China? What in the world? How did they do this? This is crazy. This is long. <laughs> right? I'm like, that is incredible. Gosh. Rammed Earth. So they've been doing Rammed Earth in China since 7000 B.C. This was built in 200 BC. <clears throat> it's magni magnificent. W weird motives, probably, but what a cool thing. <laughs> Humans are weird. <laughs> I'm not human. I'm not weird. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Tibet, the, uh, these are monasteries. They've been building these for the the last 500 years. This is uh, also this is rammed earth up in the mountains, Nepal, Tibet, Taos Pueblo. These are my peoples in Taos Pueblo. Yeah, I got some homies in the Taos Pueblo. They're cool. They're cool people. They they have uh, resisted colonization in in a in a big big way where their land. They've kept autonomy. This little piece of land tucked back up in the mountains and all this. Nobody goes back there. What's the Taos nature? You can't go back there. But they got some cool buildings that they've been preserving for about 900 years. People still live in them. 900 years keeping maintenance. They had their little celebrations and maintenance the buildings. and It's deep. The Akoma and the Hopi, they also got a similar thing going on. Mud cities. Uh, yeah, these are the oldest inhabited cities in America. That's cool, huh? Uh, that's right down the block. You can go over there and say, what's up? Bam, Iran. These are the uh, largest adobe structures still standing from 500 B.C. In Bam, Iran. <laughs> this thing, this thing. I tried to show a bunch of different angles on it. But it's like, yeah, a long time ago, and it's still standing. That's you. You, you can kind of see the the trend here, right? These things still standing. The Yemen mud cities. Oops. Look at that. Some mud skyscrapers, apartment complex buildings made out of earth. I really want to go visit. I know Yemen, they be dropping bombs over there and all kind of crazy stuff. Peace to the Yemen people. That's hardcore. But yeah, the Yemen. This was in Geneva, New York. This was in the turn, like around the 1840s. A uh, sun-dried adobe brick. Sun-dried adobe brick. So this shows that... Uh, Earthen walls, the construction, right? It could be, you could build it in rainy climates too. It doesn't have to just be in the desert. Has outstanding performance even in temperate, you know, moist climates. Interesting. So, uh, what's it say? From the from the 1830s to the 1880s, 15 large adobe homes were built in this area in Geneva. And at least 35 to 40 in the state in the t at, at that time. 
gosh, I wish that would have just caught on more. Because, you know, these things, they're for a million dollar home in Geneva, New York. Wildberg, Germany. This was built 1837. This is another apartment building. This is a rammed earth, five-story rammed earth apartment building. The, the builder's name is Yochen Gutzel. I, that, I, I destroyed his name. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yochen. German. <laughs> All right. So the materials, methods, and designs. We just got our foundation, right? The tried and true. This is a tested, tried and true way. It's not just like something that we came up with like, oh, let me, let me try this. Our, it's cool. We get to innovate. We get to like mismatch things if we want. You know, I'm going to show you a bunch of different Methods and designs, ways, who knows what the best way really is, you know? I'm just showing you a bunch. It's cool. That's what's cool. So, but they do have their their ways that make them sound, you know, their principles. And so I, I do encourage folks to learn, learn, you know, these methods and these designs and how they came here and then see what you can do with it from there, right? Just like that we just did. We went through the foundation, the history, the her story, the stuff. And then we, you know, we come into the, into the practice, pre present practice. We making the new, we making the new stories for the future, folks. Let's go. Defining a good natural building material. All right, we ready for this? Good now. I know you know. you like, let's go. I know. Let's see his room now. <laughs> All right. Is it easy to get? We're going to ask ourselves some questions, right? Ask ourselves some questions. That's, this has been my whole life, figuring out how to be a better question asker, right? Whew. It's, it's a tricky one. But it, is it easy to get? Is it easy to use? Right? So is it locally abundant? Does it require a lot of processing before it can be used? Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. Locally abundant, is it, uh, does it require a lot of processing, right? Does it do its job, right? It's, it fulfills a specific purpose. Does it withstand the test of time? To me, that's what it's supposed to do, too. Even the nomads, they stuff, they pass down generations. Like, oh, my granddad made this TP right here. We still using it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Does it pollute the indoor or outdoor environment? Again, you know, we mentioned it. A bunch of the modern production techniques, they cause a bunch of uh, pollution, right? release a whole bunch of toxic materials into the environment just a lot of times it's just the stuff that the the end product itself is toxic you know let alone they just poo pooed all over the environment and then it's like the thing they got is like ah, this thing get you cancer you're like oh thanks <laughs> You feel me? Oh, what's up? What's up, homie? <laughs> feel me. So can it be replenished?
right? Where's the where are the materials coming from? Are we is it over harvested the where the materials are coming from? Is it are, are you do, are we doing regenerative practices to keep keep you know make sure that this source can continue? Or are we disrupting, severely disrupting, destroying the ecosystem to get the materials? What's going down? Can it be replenished? Does it create waste? Right? The modular, the mass produced materials, the construction that causes so much waste. Have you ever visited a conventional construction site? Anybody? Yeah. Right? Y'all yeah, seen it, right? They got the big old dumpsters. <laughs> They're just like chopping big old pieces of stuff. You're like, I can use that. Mm -hmm. I can put it in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> four feet of this two by four and leave the other four feet in the trap. Right. Just cut it in half. Like, oh, we just need this half. So we got to consider the embodied energy, the total energy expended to produce the material, transport it to the point, right, where it's going to be used, and then the energy to actually install it, right? The embodied energy, the whole pathway, the whole story, you know? And this, this is cool because this goes for everything. It could be food. It could be water. It could be your friends. Oh, y'all yeah, get that. Y'all right. get that later. You know? Let's go through everything. The energy expended to produce the material, to move it, to move the material. Uh oh. <laughs> I'll just talk. There's words anyway. Y'all just looking at a screen of words. I'm like, oh, look at that pretty picture. That's all good. I have a question. Yeah, please, let's talk. So uh, one, of, one of the things I saw you mentioned twice in there is like mineralized uh, process. Mineral, so not going too much of the process using our band with the create. And then also spoke about um, like what is it, how much waste is it producing and mineralized like the waste. So I'm, Curious, like how do we create that? And I would like to use like prefab homes. They minimize waste because it's prefabricated. We know what it's going to be. It's clicked together, easy. But that took a lot of mental process. And what is the bridge between the minimalization of the process and the creating of less waste? And how can we bridge that? Damn, that's. Can you can you put that in? Can you ask the question again? Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah ask so, how can I not think so much and build something and not have a lot of waste? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So the thinking part. You know, it's, again, with nature, you see what it's doing in nature, right? Yeah. There's all the stuff that I'm talking about today are, are baseline where to come from. Anything on top of this, it, it is starting to overcomplicate. You know that we have the whole uh, what's the certified what's the certification for to be green leads certifications and buildings and there's all these things these systems of thought that could overcomplicate uh, natural building you know and green building and uh, so I would you know that's my my advice my encouragement is to just align with these natural phenomena. And use the technology that exists in in those relationships, you know. So we, you want to get propane, build a methane waste treatment thing, and harvest the propane. You, you see what I'm saying? That's that's to me, that's some brainiac shit, but it's still basic, you know. It's still a basic thing that happens in nature that is 
a phenomenon that's so much bigger and more powerful than any one of us in our noggins, you know? Yeah, you know, in intuition is even more precise, <laughs> if you ask me. You feel me? So, absolutely, absolutely. Bringing that into this type of process, the more that we can do that, you're, you know, it's, it's just a strong union, strong sh thing that's going to happen. Uh, and, and I don't, you know, not to knock uh, structure, and you know the like doing a 90 degree angle or something that's it's framing and measuring things is that that all is it's important and like i'm saying if if somebody that has that lens were to analyze a highly intuitive builder designer the the mathematics that they're going to find are going to blow their mind you know, the math is going to blow their mind. And it's, think about like a, a person like Buckminster Fuller, right? Created the geodesic dome, right? Inventing the geodesic dome. There's theories that if you build a big enough geodesic dome and then build and actually build it a full globe, right? And then build a city inside of it, the gases from the city will lift the thing off the ground. <laughs> He, he came up with that just hanging out at the beach. <laughs> looking at bubbles. I'm like, oh, look at the bubbles. Oh, oh, bubbles. Right? <laughs> Triangle <of> bubbles. <laughs> you <know>, weirdo. <laughs> Anybody else? What y'all think? I'm wondering what those compacted earth is made of. We can do something like that around here. This obviously Right? You're like dirt, man. He's like, Get to the dirt, man. Look at you see outside. <laughs> I feel you. you got a dirt farm, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 interesting because in this area, it wouldn't hurt to find out what is in the dirt. You know, doing soil tests and whatnot are not a bad idea, ever, if you ask me. But um. That is a little techy, you know? So essentially what you need to build with, with dirt is you need three components, you know? You know it, right? Clay. Clay. Water. Definitely water. Well, you know, water is like, that's like the spirit. Pressure. The Holy Spirit. <laughs> I know, that's messed up. What's that? Pressure. Pre oh, so you go high tech with it. I'm, so I'm just, I'm just talking about the material of that we're building clay. with, right? You need to clay the sand. 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 Clay, sand, sand, and the fiber. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yeah. Right. That's that's what you need. And uh, so if you can find that, you know, if you can find some clay in this soil, then you know the clay is the very fine, finest material. Okay. Okay. Y'all do what you gotta do. So yeah, the clay is, is the finest material. So when the water hits it, because yeah, you need the water to activate it all. The water, the clay absorbs the water and, and it expands, right? So the idea is then, so now you have that clay and it does that when the water hits and then expands. And then you have the sand, right? And the sand, ooh, upside down. And then we have the sand and the sand are like little micro bricks. They're, there's the compression, right? That's what you're talking about, compression. That, so, the, so this is a cool thing. When you put mud with sand and then water and mix it all together, right? The, the, what did I say, mud, 
or the clay, clay with sand when you put water on it, it's mud, right? So the clay and the sand together when you put water, the clay expands. And then when it dries, it contracts, so it pulls the sand back and it compacts the sand. It's doing its own little compression thing. So it's pretty cool. And then, yeah, then if you have the threads, right, you have the fiber, then you, there you go. Now you have this tensile, woven together, hard, hard substance. It's really cool. And the brick, so, and then the bricks, right, the little mini bricks, the sand, ideal sand, we're on this tangent right now, ideal sand is jagged edged sand, right? So that's why we don't actually want to use silk. In this scenario, we're, we're the most basic way to make some build, you know? Right, because the silt is, if you look at the smallest particles of silt, they're real smooth and rounded. And, and when you have sand, it's like, it's really jagged, the jagged sand, right? So then when it compresses, it teeths in with each other and it just locks in. So it's really cool. Th those are the little, that's the, the brainiac stuff, you know, that you gotta go through in natural building. And then there are some places in those ancient uh, buildings that we just went through and saw. Some of those places had the perfect mixture of, of all the materials they needed. Just deposited. You know, they didn't even have to mix it. They just lifted it up, put some water on it, and then threw it, threw it, threw it into the wall. And, and then there's other, there's magnesium, there's other phosphorus, there's other chemicals, I don't know if they knew, but there's those chemicals in it that when they react with each other, the way that it cures and hardens and it preserves stuff. So, you know, what are some awesome natural building materials? That's we got it upside down and inside out. To the part. It's all good. I, I remember my prompt and this is a good prompt anyway. What's the, what are some building materials? We just talked about a few. Straw. Straw. Sand. What I have experience with most of the times I really use the hands-free forest and use trees basically make the relation TV using branches and just keep layering and weaving them together. The little the little lean tools and whatnot. It's really easy. So yeah, there you go. Wood. Yeah, you got you. Animal animal fibers. Mm -hmm. Oh you got nice. What else? Is there anything else y'all can think of? You mentioned it. What's happening? Oh. Water. Water. Yeah, that's a good material. Can you use stone, like dry stack stone? Stone. Metal. Right, metal. You know, you could use animal urine and dung. Yes. <laughs> that's weird, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's hard to say hemp hemp and mycelium, yeah, so like fibers, yeah, fibers, right, you can grow a house now, yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of things we could do, you know, there's a lot of materials, there's this thing called pazalana, pazalanas, pazalanas, like Italian word, huh? pazalanas, it's a, it's like ash, right? And if you, you get it in the water and mix it, it, it does something with the curing process. It makes the curing process more durable. So like volcanic ash and fly ash. So now we're talking about bringing things that are waste products, right? And pulling them out of the waste stream and making them building materials. Now this, this is, um, you feel me? You feel me? All right. So this, yeah, this is cool. So, so the last thing to mention is trash in the waste stream. That's a building material. Trash. <laughs> That's crazy. Yo, think about the future in the dumps. I hope that they have AI sorting through the dumps and not humans. But you know they're gonna be sorting through those dumps to to harvest material. You know, here we go. 
Here we go. So, yeah, basic choices. Earth is the, uh, that's a choice, right? Earth, and there's, there's versions of Earth. Liftable Earth. So, like, bricks and blocks and bags. Plaster. Things you can lift. And then there's the massive, the monolithic stuff. With, like, rammed Earth. The cob. You know, laying a floor, you know. Lay the floor somewhere else and then carry it over and stick it down, right? You just lay it right there, so monolithic. And then the fibers, right? Straw, hemp, wool, cotton, and beyond. And then the way that the fibers break down, you have bales, there's bats, you, and you, you can use it as infill or like a binder, right? Like we mentioned with the clay and the sand. And you see in parentheses it says, can protect fiber and wick moisture away from wood. And then there's, there's cool things like cordwood. I don't know if you guys have ever seen cordwood. It's a pretty cool thing. Uh, I'll show you a picture of it. And then, yeah, there's wood chips, hemp chips, straw, all these things you can infill as for insulation and all these, these things. So. Is it okay if we go over a little bit? Oh, we're shifting like Okay. Because like, I'm like, oh, it's time to say goodbye. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. oh. Good job. like halfway. Intuitive. All right, cool. Intuitive. There we go. All right, cool. And then, yeah, the stone and the wood, right? Logs, timber, lumber, bamboo. The beetle kill up here in the Rockies. That's a, a building material. So, uh, methods and designs. Here we go into the some of the nitty gritty. We got the adobe bricks, right? There's non-fire and non-compressed. That's what adobe brick is. So it's not heated at high temperatures. and Because that, you know, that does something to the compression rate, right? Like what my man is talking about. What, how much it can hold, right? The, the strength of what it could hold. Um, but these things, it still has, it's still strong. You know, we, I built a house in Southern Colorado we made a frame just like that out there with some scrap wood. We got, we got some of the materials delivered, but we used some of the stuff on site. And we made these bricks, at, you know, the adobe bricks, and laid, laid them in these things, had them sitting out in the sun, dry, you know, they just sun dry, right? Flip them around, they had sand, straw, clay, right? And then we made another a mortar that was kind of out of the same material without the clay, right, to, to make it juicy. And guess what we built? We built a roof out of brick. It's liftable, right? It's a lift back here, like Legos. So it was, it's really fun. That's a dirty brick. It's so basic. You can, we made it in the middle of nowhere. You know, we were bringing in water and everything. It was crazy. So then there's cob and wattle and daub. Right? This is sand, clay, straw, and this hand sculpted structures. You could do them in wet and in dry climates. Sometimes they have, you see, like this one, there's a plaster, it's a lime plaster that makes it more durable to things like what's going on outside right now. These type of events. And it's, you know, you see, it's, this is, it's like, it's like woven together. It's latest, it's la lattice. Now they do that in metal, you know, it's a like rebar in, in concrete, whatnot, right? So it's a similar idea. That's massive earth. You, you build it, it stays there. There's paper creek. This is a cool little strategy um this design is it's lightweight 50 to 80 percent waste paper is being used so it's one of those bringing some trash and turning it into a building material and a lot of times we you'll add portland cement to it which is like a it's like an old school it's less mixed cement. There's less process going on. Still a lot of process though, cement. Uh, sand, there's clay, you put glass, 
like recycle or trash, you know, trash glass, fly ash. You stick that in there. So just, you know, waste burnt material. And it's super affordable, and you could shape it. There's different colors and textures. You could stretch the use, you know. You could really stretch this material. So this is, they consider fiber bat or liftable earth. Okay, and then there's hempcrete. We, somebody mentioned hempcrete already when I first came in. Robin, yep. Yeah. Hemp creep. Hemp. Break it. Break it down. Tell it. Mold proof, fireproof, carbon sequestering. Grow it yourself. And you know, what do you got in the next line, Yash? <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, that was a wrap right there. Hey, also, it's made out of uh, hemp stock, which normally just gets discarded or composted, so it doesn't actually have a use other than for building material or composting. So you might as well just go to all of your local hemp farmers and ask them for their extra hemp stock and then yep. you can build your own houses with it. Yep. The hemp herd. Yep. It's way more sustainable too because even if it does break down over time, it just composts back into the earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when you make it hemp creed, it's not, it ain't composting back into nothing. You know what I mean? Because it got all the, the cement, it's the lime, it has all those other chemical reactions going off and it's drawing in carbon over time and getting harder and more durable over time. That's another cool thing about hempcrete. You know, so it just keeps getting stronger. And uh, it's self-insulating, it breathes. It's weird, it's really weird. It's alien. <laughs> Technology, that's some high tech stuff right there. There's this guy, Dr. Hemp House from Russia, but he moved to California and he makes like the nicest looking houses you've ever seen so just search Dr. Hemp House and you'll see these hemp mansions and really uh, fancy like nice houses. Dr. Hemp House. Write them notes down. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah these are fiber bat or liftable earth as well. Then we have the compressed earth bricks or the blocks and this is, is subsoil so it's not you don't go to the tops soil for most of our building you don't do the topsoil that's what you grow the food in right we go up underneath the topsoil for these materials and these are uh, these are compressed with a hydraulic press you know the comp the the whole compression rate this is just out of this world for this type of stuff so you see that look it holds you can make these crazy arches and just really wild designs. Um, flying buttresses. Oh, have you ever heard of those? Oh, those are cool. But um, yeah, this is liftable earth. It's masonry. Uh, again, like vaults and domes and arches. Buttresses are really common with when you're using compressed blocks. Then stabilized ram earth. This is a whole other style. Where you you know you create a frame, and then with this, it's it's compressed, right? You compact it into these frames, but you use a lot of times gravel, sand. You can use silt in these, which is interesting. And then you mix cement in there as well to reinforce it. And then these colors, if you see this, like you can change colors. You just ox you put these oxides in the different mixtures for layer for layer, and it makes these really pretty walls. So it's it's massive earth. But yeah, you can, it's pretty. And it's, it's I'm gonna get into it. My, my, the last slide I have is gonna show you how all this works, like all these different styles and why we build out of earth to begin with um, in a science way, kind of. So there's earth bags, right? can be filled with local materials, earthen mixtures, and they're reinforced, re reinforced with small proportions of Portland, of Portland cement, or, or another kind of lime cement. We put about, you could put like 10 and 20 percent of the mixture. 
And these are cool. You can like build and keep adding on and connecting rooms and oh my gosh, you can make some really cool stuff with earth bags. And they're uh, very resilient against natural disaster stuff, right? Like uh, seismic, they just like, they're, it's called flexible form building, right? They shit, this stuff just bends with the earth, and like woo, you dance with the earth. You know, floods, not getting in there, wind, you ain't knocking this thing down. It's gonna take Thanos. <laughs> oh my goodness. Straw bell, straw, straw bell is super insulative. And I'm gonna break that down a little bit in a second, but straw bell is super insulative. And it, again, it's the same, it's kind of the same idea as hemp. So with the herds and hemp, right, with your, the internal, like actual living organism stuff in the middle, you know, the genetic material and all that, the stuff you could eat, or the fibers, all that stuff in the middle gets taken out. And you just have the, the outside shell, right? That's the hemp herd. Well, the same thing with straw, right? The straw is usually, it's the husks of like wheat or rye or rice, oat, hemp, like we just mentioned. And it's the outside of it. It's just the casing. Okay, so there's no real organic material that could grow or it's just cellulose, right? It's kind of an inert material. That's why it's so uh, good in building. And um, yeah, these you can put these up quick. They could be load bearing, a straw bell. You could put weight on them, or you could just build frames and then stick them inside the frame because it's super insulative. It, meaning you could put it up in the middle of a mouth somewhere and just have a little little fire on the inside and nice sealed up space, and it get negative tw twenty degrees outside, and you'll be nice and cozy inside. You know, insulative blocks the temperature from moving through it. Uh, and then, yeah, you can easily fin put finishes on straw bell, the plasters and whatnot. What's up, my brother? What keeps it from rotting? Um, dr keeping it dry. <laughs> so yeah, good question. I, he, I see he's trying. He led me into this. Okay, I see. Yeah, no, straw straw bell, straw bell. Yeah, you got to keep straw bell dry. Because it can, if it gets wet, it gets moldy, and then the animals can, you got to seal it off good, make sure the animals can't get up in it and live up in it. So those are, that's a good point, you know. Thanks for, for reminding me to mention that. I've, What's I've, up, my brother? I've worked with uh, straw bell houses, built a couple actually in Taos, New Mexico. Boom. Club low kid, too. Yeah, so okay, I see you, there. I see you. Um, and we found problems with, we had to actually start building shelves because they would break down over time oh, and they deep. would compress more and more. Oh, okay. So there's a new evolution in straw bell construction where they're doing more frames and building shelves to put the straw bell where it's more of an insulation than a load bearing. Right, right. Currently, that, that's what I found recently. <coughs> okay, so that's that that's makes sense, right? So yeah, you developments could be load bearing, but recommend just making it infill. <laughs> Makes sense to me, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Preserve it. It's like this precious little insulated gift. <laughs> and just beating up on it all the time with the roof. That's messed up, man. <laughs> Take care of your fiber bell liftable straw. <laughs> all right. Passive house. This came out of Europe, out of Germany. Uh, this is a... These are really cool. Uh, it's, it's like solar orientated. They do the compact form, and they make the wall super insulative, and they, the thermal envelope is airtight. So it's like super sealed, and the ventilation is highly controlled, right? And they do these heat recovery things where you know how heat rises to the top, and so they'll take the heat from the top, and they'll push it 
through the house and they'll bring the cold air in certain ways and it's pretty cool. Uh, it's a little techy, you know, but uh, yeah, high comfort level. It, it doesn't. It still doesn't use a lot of energy. And they use the P, uh, PV, you know, panels, electricity. So now you're starting to get into some more modern style. We got the cord wood, and this is. Forgive me. This picture is not more clear. But cordwood is used as an infill. That's like, that's infill. All right? It's just a, using a material to fill up space so you don't have to use as much of another material. Which is a little different than insulation. You can use insulation as infill, right? But infill is not necessarily insulation. It's deep. Bamboo. Bamboo is crazy, y'all. Y'all know bamboo is like one of the most highly used, like it has the uses of bamboo, or like you can do everything with it. It's crazy. It's super durable and flexible. It's water resistant, and it grows fast. The, you know the, the story of the bamboo farmer? Like the bamboo farmer plants the bamboo seeds, and it waters the seeds. And then it's filled, you know, filled bamboo with the seeds in it. And the year goes by, nothing. And the ne next year, doing watering, you know, doing maintenance, like putting the fertilizer, doing the weeding and all that water. <laughs> Second year, nothing. People start looking at the bamboo farmer like, well, you, what are you doing? You are just watering a barren field. Okay. <laughs> Third year, same thing. Now he's like the town crazy, you know. Fourth year, same thing. Nobody messes with this dude anymore. He's just, <laughs> something's wrong with him. You know, we just, it's over there. Fifth year comes, end of the fifth year, water in the bamboo field, and these little sprout things come up. All right. Beginning of the sixth, sixth year, Within three weeks, the bamboo grows like 50 feet, 100 feet tall. It's crazy how bamboo works. And when it starts doing that growing, you can hear it grow. <laughs> At night, it's crazy. Has anybody ever had that experience? It's a, right? You're like, what? It's like. <laughs> <laughs> <That's great. laughs> it's growing. Yeah. So bamboo is cool. It's a uh, yeah, multi-purpose. You, know, you can use it for the roof, for the ceiling, for the walls, for the floor, the the rebar, nails, stakes. You can just build a whole house out of bamboo. Just everything. All the, the all the materials. It's, it's the tools. <laughs> you be like, yeah, I got bamboo tool hammer. <laughs> Yeah, I want to add to um, the cool thing. Once you cut it, it grows 50 feet again in six months. Right. So then <laughs> yeah. you could grow a house at a time. You could literally right. grow a house at a time right. and just build a house, and then six months later you have all the material you exactly. need again to build another one. Right. And that was the that was the point of that bamboo farmer story. Is that six, for six years, all that stuff is growing its root system, right? So it doesn't pop out until the roots are like. So yeah, I'll, you cut me off, I'll just keep coming. <laughs> Forever. <laughs> yeah, forever. Yeah, all right, now we got the Earthship Biotexture. This is what I, I immersed myself in this um, at one point. And I still, you know, I'm still heavily involved. Just this the mind frame that, that it gives you uh, is really interesting. And it kind of, it ties together all of this stuff, right? So there's six principles of biotexture. I, you know, I said the Earthship because to give the, the credit to Mike Reynolds and the um, people down at Taos, you know, Mike, he's got some controversial stuff going on right now. That dude's kind of crazy. But, you know, sometimes, you know, people, they, people and then the ideas, right? You got to separate people from ideas, you know? 
And uh, unfortunately, if you are a person that aligns with your ideas, awesome. You're a great person to be around. But not everybody necessarily does that. But um, I digress. Biotexture is cool. Biotexture is, is biology and architecture. So we had, what was the other one? There was another one that was architecture. Commute, communitext, communitexture. So you know, you see how we do it? Like we got all these things that we just put them together. Oh, I'm gonna do that now. Biology and architecture, that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> you know, and so it's, oh, you can't even see that. But yeah, it's really cool. It's their systems, right? It's now you're starting to think about design and building as a whole system of living, a living experience. Not just one part. Like So most of the other stuff I show is like aspects of the building, right? Materials and methods. This kind of uh, I mean, brings it all together because there's, there's six design principles in biotexture, right? You're building with natural and recycled materials. You have this thermal and this th solar orientation and the thermal mass heating and cooling. So that's they say thermal and solar heating and cooling. So thermal mass, what, what they do is they take that recycled material that they're using, which is tires, right? It's the main building material in the main of wall, load bearing walls is it's tires and they're rammed with sledgehammers you ram, ram a bunch of earth into them okay so you're embodying the earth in the strength of the planet it's crazy you are sore you're sore out there you do that you're you're encountering these elements so you ram a, a earth excuse me a brick with earth and this is the cool thing with this. It really doesn't matter what earth. As long as the stuff can compact, you can use it because it's being encased in a tire. It's a rubber and steel brick. It's very strong. And it's about 300 pounds after you get done pounding it. So you, you pound them in place and you build walls. These walls are what we call all this compression I've been talking about, compressed bricks, compressed earth. It's, it's called thermal mass, right? So when you compress a substance and, and make it dense, like water, water is really dense. It will hold temperature like a battery. So it'll hold the temperature, whether it's hot or whether it's cold. Whatever temperature, it will hold it and store it. Right? So we use that, and you orientate these buildings de depending on where you're at in the world. So these happen to be created in our area right here, like just down the block in Taos. And so this is a four season place, and we're in, the, right, we're in the northern hemisphere, so the sun is coming from the south. So we orientate it with the sun. If we're in the tropics, we're like, ah, I don't want no sun. You orientate it with the sun, but away from the sun. You see what I'm saying? So you think about that. <laughs> and then, because where we're at, we open it up. We're like, ooh, it gets cold. I want some sun. So we open it up, and it lets this heat in, the sun. And it's really cool. I'm going to get into it. Uh, see, I, I, I got away with myself. All right, let me, let me go. Here it is. Eight minutes. Or eight minutes, and then you keep going after the next person. Eight minutes. <laughs> All right. So the, so the thermal, this is how it works. The sun, you orientate it. In the, in the wintertime, the sun is coming deep into the house because it's, it's low in the sky. It hits the walls, and the walls are encased in insulation in the roof. So now when the heat hits the wall, it charges up the wall with temperature. And it stores it until it gets colder inside the house because the heat can't escape out. So now the only place the heat can escape is into the house. So now you don't need fire, you don't need stoves and none of that stuff. It's crazy. And then in the summertime, the sun's high in the sky, so it goes into the house very shallow. And the earth, if you see right here, 
it stays about 58 degrees when you get to a certain place. So anywhere near that is cool. So the earth stays cool, the walls stay cool if you're able to connect into the earth. Sometimes you can't and you have to insulate away. But regardless, the sun's not hitting those walls, so the walls stay cool in the summer, right? So this is temperature control. It's magical. You go out in the house, it's negative 20 degrees in the winter, and it's 75 degrees inside the house, right? And then we're using electricity from the sun and the wind. And then until we find new ways, I'll just put it there. The extractive, you know, resources of solar panel, panels, if we're thinking about embodied energy, right? There's, there's always room to innovate. Then we got water harvesting. Harvesting the water from the sky. We know that the aquifers are being depleted. And the water that comes from the sky is naturally distilled. So it's just distilled water. We catch it, we store it in tanks inside the earth. We bury, bury it in berms and gravity feed it into the house through these pumps. You see, so you see how you can't see it but the roof and then it goes in the cistern and then it goes through the pumps and the filters into a pressure tank into for household use, right? And then it goes down into the planters and grows food. That's cool. Plants are uh, sewage treatment. And then you have your toilet, where you have the excess water from the plants that they didn't use, but they treated, right? Biologically treated water that's active, bioactive, and you put it in the toilet and flush your doo-doo away, and now your doo-doo breaks down nice and faster and better and healthier, and it goes into botanical treatment cells outside the house, and you grow more plants. Water harvesting, we're using water four times instead of one. I think that's a great idea. No matter what you build, figure out how to use your water four times. Then we got contained sewage treatment, right, like I mentioned. And then the food production. You grow food. You grow food. So this, this building gets you all your sustenance. It's, just, it's a system. And it's a living creature. I love it. You know, then it don't really work unless you living in it, working it. Flushing the toilet and Harvesting the food, right? Man and man in the pumps and whatnot. So yeah. I want to go to just point out that there's bananas. You can grow bananas inside of your earth ship. It's pretty That's pretty, pretty cool. trippy. Yeah. So you have the, you have a tropical environment inside this space that it could literally be negative 20 degrees outside, and you have a 70 degree tropical environment, clean air, food growing. You see where, I'm, where, where the evolution of your boy Mike Word came to, right? Remember the beginning of my story to this is where I find myself being drawn to. So, um, yeah, and then, you know, you got your finishes, like earthen floors and plasters and rocket stones. There's all kinds of, so many examples of natural building and green building and just that healthy lifestyle that we all, we want. You know, and, and if you look at the footprint ecologically, uh, for like carbon emissions. If you, look at that. That's pretty much, that's household. All this is house. That's half. That's half of all the, the pollution is just coming because we live in houses all over the world. And, and look, you know what I'm saying? There you go. She didn't uh, took it to the next level. And then we work outside our houses. We don't, we're not building these communities. Right, and you you led right into it. This is what what my work is. We build work, we're, we're building, designing communities to to live like this, right? And teach people these ways, you know. So this is some of our designs, and what we're looking for land now. We're raising capital. We're becoming business savvy. We're embracing all these systems, right? And not shunning any of the systems. We're taking the good things from all the other systems that we have, and uh, we're building, you know, these these new designs new ways of living. And you know, this I ain't, I ain't saying nothing new. I know everybody in here is on this tip, you know? So that, this is just my contribution and our contribution. Anybody who wants to hang out with us and, and, hang, and, you know, involve yourself with what I'm doing, please feel free to reach out. I'm gonna put my contact at the end. This, this is my man Buckman, so I wanted to leave on this quote though, you know, it's a designer, because we're designing our own lives here, you know? Once we awaken to that, then we can do that. 
that's what we start doing. So I, I, I just assume that's what we're doing in this space. We're designing our own lives. So Buckminster said it best. He's like a designer is an emerging synthesis of artists, inventor, mechanic, objective, economist, and evolutionary strategist. You know? Yeah. We're, we're multidimensional creatures, y'all. I'm just like, the things that we can make and have and build and create that can take care of life is just, it blows my mind. And it's way more exciting and intriguing and powerful and moving and moving for me than any of the bull crap that's going on that tries to pull us down, you know? So that's why I wrote the way I wrote. That's why your boy Yash was like hollering at me, you know? Because we vibe on that level. And it's, and I appreciate all y'all's space and attention and energy and, you know, you want to strategize, strategize with me, you can go on my website. I got this little website and it has a video. It's called Throw You For A Loop because uh, there's steps to this and uh, we got to get our, you know, each step together. And, uh, but yeah, watch my video. If, if it talks to you, I, you know, you're not going to hear nothing that we talk about tonight, but know that that's where this is leading. And uh, yeah, we can strategize. There's my, my email. We got the website. If you want to go on my IG, Mike Word the 33rd. And, um, yeah. Josh, thanks for having me. Forgive me, I went 30 minutes over my time. But, uh, yeah, thanks for rocking with me, y'all. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, y'all. Yo, Tight, thank you. Thank you so much, brother. I'm so glad you can make it. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Can we get it out one more time? Yeah. 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 yeah.